Yeah, so down to the bottom left of the map, playing in yellow as the Britons, we have ourselves Mr. Falcon Shrey. And over to the right of the map, playing as the Britons as well, because of course we are on Mirrored Civ right now, is Poz Eddie. Yeah, uh, so we've got a Britain's War, and look at the map. Man, don't you just love this when you get the, the first match of the set. Uh, Going to be thrown right into Atacama right here, uh, which is a challenging map, to say the least. Well, pretty much going off what we said at the start of the game, disencouraging walling here. I think this map pretty much proves exactly what we were saying. <laughs> yeah, um, so <laughs> around the around the start of their, well, their starting TC area, they have so little wood right here, uh, which is going to force the players right into the center of the map, which again has pretty sparse wood, but uh, it's certainly going to make sure that the players are engaging from a very early uh, point in this game and it will also mean that the players are very open to raiding throughout the course of the game That's it scouts gonna be absolute hell on this map during the early game And of course anyone who manages to take this area in the middle here if We do see castles come up towers to push them off it Well, whoever has this middle bit here gonna be in complete control of the game yeah, exactly. Of course, if you've not got any income of wood at all, then that's pretty much it. Um, if you don't have any wood income, you can't build farms to make food, you can't build buildings to make military, and you know you can't make military either because, well, unless you're building something that requires food and wood. But both these guys play as Britons, so wood going to be so important for them. Um, you know, especially with making those archers, which I imagine both these guys are probably going to be going for. You're exactly right. The Britain Archer bonus in this point just really going to be such a bonus to the players. It's if they don't go for it, the opponent definitely going to be going for it. Uh, and from there, it's just gonna, that extra range is going to help them shred any incoming light cavalry or anything along those lines. Even knights, once we've seen enough crossbows come up, there is that critical mass with yeah. that extra range as well. Going to cut them off before any wheel raiding can be done at all. Exactly, and not only that, but you've got to remember this center map, it's going to be pretty hard for them to wall up without actually uh, leaving their lumber camps at risk. So long-ranged archers going to be a little bit of a problem to these villagers chopping wood in the center of the map as well. So I think we're going to see a pretty fast-paced game right here, and it's going to be very, very interesting to see how the players decide to actually go about playing this one. Yeah, Falcon Stray going straight in for the middle of the map right now. Looks like he wants to get in there as quickly as possible and just kind of build up around it. So keep Eddie out of there for as long as possible. Yeah, it is certainly possible to wall up in the center of the map with some palisades, for instance, between these ponds. Um, but as you can see, Falcon Stray, as you say, going straight to the center with that lumber camp there. And, you know, I think that's a good decision to make because players are inevitably going to be going to the center anyway. The thing that Eddie's done back here, building this lumber camp in the back means that he's only going to have to spend another 100 wood building one on the front later on anyway. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see if he actually goes for the middle or whether he's going to go for just try and taking the wood on the outside and not even bother fighting it and then perhaps go and raid Falcon Tray at his base. Yeah, the way Eddie's actually put his lumber camp up is at the moment he's only got about 400 more wood there and he's going to have to build another lumber camp to keep it efficient. So really he's going to be wasting a lot, well he's going to be wasting one tree there for every time he has to move. So really not the most efficient way to be going and as we know Age of Empires have to be very efficient to be very good at it. Exactly, it is all about efficiency right here. I think one thing that we could see both these players going for a little bit later on, there is always, always the potential for some uh, towers in the center right here. But it looks like Falcon Shrey right now putting up a barracks on 20 population uh, just past the 630 mark, maybe adding in some militias right here, which would be interesting. <clears throat> I'd be extremely surprised if we don't at this point. That barracks going to be up very, very early right now. He has the resources there to be able to do it. He does have the 60 gold in the bank already with Loom done. Uh, and of course, Eddie going up with the barracks as well because he's going to want to get some counter militia out here. He could be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, exactly. You know, with having that wood camp at the back, it's going to make it very easy for Falcon Shred to hit that with some militia. And Eddie is really forced into this position. I don't think this was part of his game plan initially. Um, obviously, he did take that boar quite early, but I don't think he was initially trying to make militia. And obviously Falcon Shrey forcing him into that, playing it on his terms. And that's also going to keep Eddie away from the center of the map as well. So Eddie could be in a bit of trouble if he loses this fight in the Dark Age here. 
Yeah, you're definitely right. Those scouts at the moment, though, both on full HP, because we know when a drush is happening, scouts absolutely crucial unit to have, because, of course, militia not going to be able to catch up with villagers very quickly, of course, due to pathfinding. Uh, but the fact is, the scout cavalry will be able to run in and get the potential last hit on a villager there. So very important unit to have at maximum health, so you can actually run right up to that town center and get that final blow to knock the villager out of the fight. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so here we go. We're going in, and Eddie does not have as many militia. It's surprisingly Falcon Shrey with four militia right now, plus his scout, which is quite a big force to be dealing with, especially if he micros it well. So we're going to see how that one turns out. Eddie going to get back towards his TC, and of course, Falcon Shrey not going to want to run those militias under there. And Eddie's also put that lumber camp up on the front, but I don't think Falcon Shrey has seen that. He has not seen it indeed, but as soon as he does, Eddie going to be in a lot of trouble there because he will be forced to fight with his villagers, actually sending his militia and scout down there right now. I think he's realized what can yeah, actually happen. Obviously, but the, of course, the chop tree is going to give it away, but he's not seemingly going to go over there. I'm not sure why. Yeah, there we go. He's going to come in right now, but Eddie going to be right behind him. So, I mean, he could get himself trapped between militias and villagers here, and that's not what Falcon Shrey really wants. So. Definitely not. He needs to make these militia as efficient as possible in the game at the moment. Because of course, they are expensive units, especially to have out so early. But really, any harassment he can do to stop those villagers gathering any resources uh, is really going to be helpful here. Yeah, certainly just uh, just harassing him, not necessarily even killing anything off. But Eddie, just about to hit feudal right now. And he's starting to take a little bit of gold. Only one villager there, but straight down with the archery range. Perhaps we'll see some skirmishes and then a transition into archers fairly soon. Vulcan Shrey, though, up to feudal as well, but not there just yet. And with this many militia out, he may upgrade to man at arms here because he does still, well, he is continuing to build them as well. Yeah, and of course, Men at Arms, very strong unit, can take out a villager 1v1, which is probably the important fact there. Eddie grabbing some stone as well right now, so it looks like he is going to go for some heavy tower play here. Yeah, he could certainly add some towers in, a big fight right now going on here. Obviously, Falcon Shrey forcing that with those militia, and Eddie losing quite a bit in the process. Falcon Shrey's scout down, mm. Eddie's scout down as well, but left to fight with villagers, and that is not the situation he wants to be in right here. Falcon Shrey still pumping out militia as well here, actually, so he's really going for as much aggression as he can, and definitely going to see Man-at-Arms here. I'd be surprised if we didn't. Yeah, there we go. Man-at-Arms upgrade coming in. He's got four militia on the map, three now, but um, you know what? If he's not careful, that Man-at-Arms upgrade actually going to be a waste because, yeah, he's actually only got two militia left, both on half health, and the barracks is, well, he cancelled it. There we go. He cancelled the, the Man-at-Arms. I think that was a good choice by him. I definitely agree there. Getting down so many units at the moment. He is up against units that they can counter relatively well. Of course, skirmishes don't do the most damage in the world to them, because of course, Man at Arms starting off with that one Pierce Armor. But Falcon Shrey actually putting up a tower on Eddie's Lumber Camp already right now. Yeah, he isn't taking any stone. Oh no, he is taking a little bit of stone, but it might be a while before he really transitions into that. But this is exactly what we wanted to see. Look at all those villagers getting involved right there. Eddie as well, bringing his villagers in. And this is exactly what this map pack was designed to do. But oh man, Falcon Shrey has actually walled him in with houses and, oh. uh, and palisades right there. Eddie going to get trapped. And oh man, those villagers are going to die. Wow, this is actually amazing play right now by Falcon Shrey here. Pushing Eddie right back into his little area here, walling him in and just taking out as many units as possible. Nice. They use a little bit of villager gathering time there, but of course the kills at the moment can be absolutely worth it. And the funny thing is, as well, he's still creating militia as well. He has got an archery range up, so he can start to produce some archers once he gets some more wood in. But he is continuing with those militias, and that's quite interesting to see. It's not the kind of thing that you would really expect from Britons, but certainly not. You know, not out of the question, and as he's clearly showing right now. Yeah, very effective strategy so far. Going for man-at-arms now and getting able to push in. I think the reason this is working so well right now is because, well, the wood count just isn't there to be able to be going archers at the moment. Yeah. There's just so much that needs to be done. The map, definitely not nice for archers. Uh, so going for them, getting as much harassment as possible, and of course having so little to protect the center right now, uh, yeah. Falcon Trade just being able to walk all over Eddie. Yeah, sort of. I don't think Eddie's in such a bad position, though. Those Man at Arms are getting in there, starting to take out a little bit of Eddie's army, but he has got um, a little bit out to defend. But trying to get up more towers in the middle and force Falcon Shrey off wood at the moment, though, not really being successful. Falcon Shrey had enough for that second tower, and now starting that archer production, which is really going to be great for him. Yeah, I agree. At this point, he's up against a lot of interesting styles of units here, so... It's something you don't really see, so the more archers you can have out right now, the further he can stay away from man-at-arms, the better position he's going to be in. 
Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. Um, so, at the moment, Eddie, looking like he's in a little bit of a bad spot, really forced off wood in the center of the map here, for taking wood at the back, but look how inefficient this lumber camp is back here. This is so far with the walking distance of these villagers, and Eddie has no other real lumber income right now, so obviously that's going to be a big issue for him, and especially with the fact that he's going for archers, so he's going to need that wood income, and he is, of course, going to need plenty of gold income as well for that. That's right, and of course, archers, as we know, very heavy on the wood count, hard to get buildings up behind them as well if you don't have a good wood count going into it. Uh, even going scouts at the moment can be hard for him, because he's got to have the wood to get those farms up right now, so really yeah. looking like he's in a tough spot. <laughs> it's certainly forcing players to really think, because of course, without that wood, as you say, unable to get farms up as well, unable to keep that food income coming in, and it really is a slippery slope. I uh, just want to say really quickly, um, there is a little bit of lag on the stream. Uh, I will restart my router after this game to try and get rid of that. It shouldn't be an issue, so I don't know why it's uh, it's being, being laggy at all. Alright, well, we'll deal with that in the break right now, though. Falcon Trey only up by 100 points, so on the point score, it doesn't look like much, but just looking at Eddie's lumber right now, it looks like he's a lot further behind than the score's really giving tail to. Yeah, I'd certainly say so. I mean, the score's not that different, but right now, with Eddie's uh, skirmishes getting in here as well, Falcon Trey losing quite a lot in terms of archers. A couple of villagers down for Eddie, but neither of them with fletching at the moment, so both their army is going to be a little bit inefficient at taking out villagers, but oh man, Falcon Shrey coming forwards with that third watchtower on the front right there. Eddie losing Ooh. villagers and again forced off of wood and that's really, really bad for him. Yeah, definitely. With that archer push that we saw from Enshrey, he did manage to take out three of Eddie's villagers, and that tower taking out an extra one right now, pushing Eddie completely off this lumber and pushing him with even more towers right now. Uh, yeah, give me a warning. This is not making life easy for Eddie at all. He has actually had to go over to the left side of the map here to keep gathering lumber, protected by his tower, so hopefully Falcon Tree will not be able to get into that area at all. Yeah, I think that's what Eddie's hoping, but he's got a bigger issue on his hands right now, obviously. Falcon Shrey just going full man mode, just going forwards with all of his villagers, getting in there, putting up towers where he can. And of course, that, that tower, that's crucial because that's going to be able to hit that uh, stone right there, I think. Uh, and if it is, that does mean that Eddie's going to have a tough time putting up defensive towers as well. This is actually being played extremely well by Falcon Trey. He's noticed the map straight away, seen what he wanted to do, and from there, just played it into the map absolutely perfectly right now. Yeah, he's playing it really well. Um, obviously, Eddie, as you said, with that uh, wood on the left side, he, it could still be salvageable for him. But if we just have a look at how many resources they both have, they're both really low on everything. They're both on 49 population. So I don't oh, think it's wow. actually that far apart, to be honest with you. But Falcon Shrey in a much better position overall, just thanks to the map control he has. Yeah, definitely. I didn't realize it was so close population wise. Both players on an equal 50 right now. This is absolutely crazy. The match is a lot closer than this is giving off right now. Yeah, it certainly agrees. And uh, you know, the score isn't that far apart either, but. Falcon Shrey coming forwards with these towers right now. Obviously going to be a big problem for Eddie, especially if it's covering this TC. It's going to force him off of farms. It's going to mean that there's even more wood wasted right there. And, uh, you hit the yeah. nail on the head there. Just losing those farms is probably going to be the biggest issue. They were 60 wood each, and when that tower comes off, gets rid of three of them. Uh, not exactly something you want. That's going to be very expensive for him to have to replace. Yeah, exactly. And with so little wood income at the moment, um, obviously going to be a problem for Eddie there. Still putting up those towers. Falcon Shrey just keeping, uh, keeping it up right there. Uh, Covering one stone on the right, also covering the rest of these farms, but Eddie's still taking stone. He's still got a reasonable amount of wood income on the left as well, and I'm going to be interested to see what his next move is right here, because obviously dealing with this many towers is no easy task. It looks like, though, a counter straight over to Falcon Shrey's base with those skirms right there. That's exactly right. Moved in through the left-hand side. They managed to push Falcon Shrey completely off gold, and it's looking right now uh, that he just wants to find somewhere to do a little bit of damage, but the problem here seems to remain that he's got skirmishes with Fletching, doesn't exactly do the most amount of damage to villagers. There's not really a lot unprotected of in Shrey right now, uh, but if he can get under that tower next to that stone, could be a bit of an issue. Yeah, it could, but obviously you've got to remember, Falcon Shrey now has got the extra uh, stone that he needs to defend, uh, putting up another tower in range of the last one, so maybe able to defend this. Obviously, Skirmish is going to be a little bit more tanky against the Watchtowers here. Um, Falcon Shrey losing one villager, 
And, you know, I don't think he's going to lose a whole lot else if he can actually just def get into this t uh, tower even. So you go down. They're losing one more, but yes, pushing those skirmishes, archers and spears away right now. Yeah, um, so I don't know. I mean, maybe if Falk, uh, Eddie went for the wood in the center, then maybe uh, Falcon Shrey would have a tougher time defending it. But again, he has got a lot of towers like all over the map. And as you say, there's not really any anywhere at all that Falcon Shrey doesn't have a tower right now to get into. Exactly. As soon as Eddie comes in with a push, he should be able to run back to towers very quickly to be able to either garrison up or just sit underneath until the passing, well, enemies go through. Because, as we know, towers do a lot of damage in the early game, especially when garrisoned, they can just take out units very quickly and they're just not worth going up against. Yeah, precisely. You know, population still absolutely neck and neck at this stage. Eddie with a little bit more military out at the moment. Um... And Falcon Shrey just with a ton of towers, really. Continuing to put them up wherever he can. Could be in a bad spot here, though. One tower up for Eddie right there. And yeah, Falcon Shrey going to get back straight away from that. Yes, Eddie putting that tower up very quickly. Moving in with the skirmishes to force the deletion there. And Falcon Shrey actually losing stone and a villager there. So good play by Eddie managing to push that one back. Yeah, and I think as long as Eddie can kind of keep a, ki a, a kind of section of his base under uh, protection from these towers then he might be all right for now he's got a lot more military as they say on the map so he is looking to push and kill falcon Shrey's villagers wherever he can and at the moment i really only see one place where falcon Shrey has no towers and that's on his gold at the front and that is exactly where eddie's gonna hit right now that is it and coming in with archers as well so gonna have a good amount of damage coming out here and oh yeah. that's two already Three, if he focuses the right one. Oh, yeah, oh, another one. good play. Ah, close, close. Three, almost four, forcing uh, Falcon Shrey off of gold a little bit there. But I think that's the only place that Falcon Shrey doesn't really have a tower right now. So a big issue for him. And I think Falcon Shrey about to click up to the Castle Age as well. Where we can probably see, I don't know, I mean, I think Rams would be a, a good decision right here to deal with the towers. Um, and, you know, upgrading to crossbow, potential for knights as well. Yeah, a lot of different options that could come out here. Wouldn't be surprised at all if we do see a Ford Siege Workshop, potentially uh, in the middle where, of course, Andre is grabbing all that wood. But just being able to push into Eddie's gold, maybe take out that archery and blacksmith, just going to be a really heavy blow for Eddie to be able to come back against. Yeah, exactly. You know, these towers, none of them are really palisaded around the bottoms as well. So if Falcon Shrey did get some rams out, he'd be able to take the towers pretty damn quickly. And there's the Castle Age uh, upgrade for him right now. Um... Same for Eddie, though. I actually didn't realize Eddie was that close. He's yep. already up. Eddie actually up first. I do believe he utilized the market to yep. get this one, though. Uh, over on the left-hand side, you can see that there. So it could be interesting. It could go either way here, depending on how players want to go. I'm kind of thinking right now we're not going to see any town centers just because of the fact there's so little wood right now. Yep. But Eddie, having enough stone for a castle. Yeah, he has, and actually, he's just taken the score lead for the first time this game, I believe. Um, but not to forget, you know, the uh, Britons do have cheaper TCs, so I suppose that is one bonus on a map where wood is so scarce. And let's see what Eddie can do right here. Coming in with those archers right now, trying to pick off villagers where he can. Managing to get one at the back. Go, go back. But uh, I think Eddie then clearly planning for a castle drop here has got the potential to put a tc down as well if he wants to all right let's have a look and yes the castle coming up next to the archery range on the front for eddie as well as the siege workshop so it looks like eddie is going to go man mode here and try and push this entire thing back yeah, exactly. If he can take control of this center, then that's going to be huge for him because obviously the longer the game goes on, the more important this center bit is going to be. Um, Falcon Shrey right here then. Going to die very quickly to the castle, uh, especially these two towers on the, well, the south of it. And of course that siege workshop going to be getting out some rams, I imagine, as well, which is going to be great for Eddie here. Yeah, that's right, because of course, as soon as he can push that back in the middle, he's going to be in a great spot. He can kind of start uh, just starving away at Entry right now, and of course, that means he's going to be able to just get out more and more units out and have a high military power. But Town Center coming up in the middle for Entry. Yeah, I don't know if I like that idea from him, you know. Ah, he's actually going to delete it. I was going to say, I really don't like that, because that castle is so close. And of course, with the Siege Workshop behind it, Rams attacking that TC would have... Back, well, cover from the castle, and that's a huge deal. So, Falcon Shrey gonna move his TC down slightly. And man, what a messy game we have right here. Crossbow upgrade done for both of them. Falcon Shrey trying to hit Eddie on the north where he's putting down a TC. 
Ooh, could potentially grab a few villages here, especially if he delays that town center, and it looks like he's going to get there just in time as well. Yeah, obviously, pulling Eddie away with the uh, two crossbows at the top, and exactly right there, taking out the villagers on that TC, going to stop that from going up, and that is going to slow down Eddie's Ooh. eco a little bit here. Quite a lot of dead villagers. Oh, man. Eddie in a bad position with these villagers oh. coming down. Mangano so coming many. in for Eddie, though. Oh, man. And, ooh, get a miss. Yeah, I actually think wow. I actually think Falcons right here is just going to micro to kill the villagers. He's not even going to try and kill the Manganel. Just going for I the agree. mills. Oh, man. Ooh, <laughs> right in on top of it. <laughs> oh, really this nice micro from him. exceptional micro right now. How many villagers did Eddie just lose? That was like 12, uh, 13, 14 maybe? I don't know, but that was great. Let's bust out the forensics. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. About 12, I think. Wow, really, ooh. really good from Andre right there. That was a huge loss for Eddie and you know he's just lost all those villagers he's not managed to get that second TC up and he has no uh, second or third TC anywhere else so really really bad news in terms of eco for him Falcon Shrey one TC up on the front a second and third TC going up as well on the golden stone right there so his eco is going to be in a good position and as long as he can defend from this siege he's going to be in a, in a great position for the rest of this game I feel yeah, that's it right now, really. But the fact is, if he can't hold this off, he's going to be in trouble. We've got two Mangonels coming out for, well, pushing forward right now for Eddie. Longbow's on the way with all the upgrades they're going to need to get as much damage as they can while still under the fire of that castle. But going to have five Longbow's there ready to push with, so really... Yeah. Obviously, I'm sure you're going to have to defend this. I was going to say, obviously, the Longbow is going to be in, a, in an okay position right here. Um, you know... Gonna be good for range, of course. Um, I think he's just going for the upgrades, but the thing with Lombos is they are quite expensive. They do take quite a long time to mass up, and you know, Falcon Shrey could probably hold them off with just crossbows if he outmasses them, and that's gonna be quite easy to do from three archery ranges. Ooh. Oh, Two for man. one Mangonels there for Enstray, and a ram out for Eddie over on their back as well, about to take out this one, and Eddie with the 11. <laughs> yeah, he knows what's up. That was quite bad for him right there. Uh, but Eddie going to push out straight away with these longbows. Let's see what he can do with them. Of course, 5 plus 3 range. It is the same as the crossbow at this stage. Um, slightly more armor upgrades for the longbows here. And we'll see what he can do. Obviously, going to be up against this Mangonel, though, so Eddie going to really have to focus that down. And I don't know, I feel, like just Falcon get Shrey, it. I feel like Falcon Shrey is going to be able to defend this with crossbows if he keeps the production up. I agree, the amount of crossbows he's going to be able to get out with the amount of archery he has there. He's got the town centers as well to give covering fire if he really needs it. And that siege workshop's there, so he can pull out a mangonel again if he needs it. Yeah, of course, that mangonel is going to be able to defend quite easily against any archer units. The thing that I find quite amusing here is that uh, Falcon Shrey is still taking stone and gold over on Eddie's side of the map. I think that's uh, just definitely, brilliant. and <laughs> still completely defended by towers as well there. Ooh, another town center actually coming up from Falcon Shrey next to the one on the right-hand side. Uh, I'm not seeing... Oh, yeah, I see, yeah. Wow, I actually thought he'd go for a castle, you know, because he... Ha well, he's got enough stone for a castle right now. But continuing with those TCs, not such a bad idea, actually. You're going to be able to provide a safe haven for villagers against any archers that might be around. Um, but really, I think he's just trying to get as much map control as he can here and make sure that he can keep his resources coming in at a good rate. Yeah, definitely a good idea to be doing that, especially in this middle section right now. Looks like there is a push from Eddie coming out, though. Two mangonels, few longbows, and a battering ram there. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I, I really feel like Eddie's going to have a tough time pushing in. I I don't know, because obviously these TCs are so close together. Village is going to be very safe, and there's the GG Ooh. from Eddie right now. Oh, there you go. the crossbows in the wood again. I think that's probably why. And there we have it. Wow. Eddie designs. And man. really well played. <laughs> what a great wow. start to the series, I've got to say. I agree. I don't think we could have seen a better map straight off the bat. I know, that was brilliant. Um, so we are going to go to game two in just a moment's time. Of course, this is a best of nine, so it's first of five wins. Falcon Shrey taking the first one. And the next map will be Eddie's home map. So we're going to come straight out right now, play a quick ad, and uh, we'll see you guys on the other side of that. Sure, Will. And of course, remember to just...